Hai Taju. Hai. To nie wygląda. No to trzeba pomalować. It does look better. Welcome to the second lesson of our free bike service school. If you remember the first one, the walls were pretty ugly. We are renewing all the things around the house here. But we need to go straight to the first experiment because we've got a lot to do in this episode. This experiment is all about citric acid, water and a rusty chain. After two days, I've put there two chains. One was rusty and the other one was more like tarnished, no longer shiny, it was kind of black. You will see the results without any mechanical cleaning. Ooh, come on and see it. These parts inside were not deepened in the water. You can see huge difference. Uh -huh. Experiment number one shows that citric acid works really well on rusty and tarnished chains. That was the first but not the last experiment in this lesson. Just remember that at the end you're gonna get three questions from me and you're gonna have to answer in the comment section. Now, really important part of this video. The correct technique for lubing your chain. This basic technique will allow you to keep your drivetrain clean like that. It's not perfectly clean, it, it never will after the ride, but as you can see there is no stickiness on the cassette. The chain isn't maybe totally dry from the outside, but it doesn't have the excessive amount uh, of uh, oil on it, and so it won't attract too much dirt. And when we look at the pulleys, these are not perfectly clean, but they are not full of grime. Get yourself some chair, and remember, this is the second lesson of the first level of our school, which is the basics. So these are the things that each bicycle owner should know. We're starting with cleaning the chain. On e-bikes, which need to have their chains particularly well maintained, you can use the simple hack that you know already from my other videos and now we can pedal backwards. The whole operation starts with shifting the chain to the smallest sprocket on the rear and the biggest chain ring on the front. Then we squeeze the rack around the chain and pedal backwards. With every 10 spins or so you should be seeing less and less dirt on the rack and that little dirt on it means you can proceed to step number 2 which means shifting the chain to the largest sprocket. The derailleur will open up and now we can a beautiful access to those jockey wheels clean them too. No dirt on these pulleys means that they will not soak up the new oil, that means the chain and the pulleys will stay cleaner for a longer time. Remember to clean both sides of them. Then we want to do the same thing with the chain rings. Uh, if you have double or triple cranks, it will be a little bit more time consuming but not very complicated. And then using a brush for your cassette will remove any sand, dirt, soil from it, that means it will also stay cleaner for longer time. Alright, now we shift back down on the cassette and inspect whether the drivetrain is ready for looping. This one is. These are the particular spots you want to put the loop on and nowhere else. These are the place with the links and the rollers. That's where the friction happens and we want to minimize friction by looping the chain. That's the whole idea of looping the chain. We're doing now the inner side of the chain. You simply let the chain to kind of grasp those drops of the oil. Uh, we do the right and the left side of each link. Now you will see exactly I'm doing the outer side, the right side of the chain. And then I will switch to the left side of the chain. I'm not putting too much there, you see I'm doing it slowly just so that you see that the chain takes those drops. This is the easier, the fastest way to lube it and not make it really dirty. Then you wanna simply do some spins so that the chain will soak up the oil and then we clean the chain from the outer side. The chain has to be looped inside and pretty clean from the outer side. If you're really into it on this level you can make one more thing. Because we loop the chain on the smallest sprocket when it moves the most, we can simply remove the excess of the oil from it. And it will take you maybe 40 seconds. 
Before we turn to the next experiment, which has been the most surprising experiment I've ever done. Question, why neglecting your chain can be very expensive? It will be one of the most expensive things on your bike. Why is it so? If you don't loop the chain, if you don't clean it, it will wear way quicker, which means you're not gonna be able to use it for 2,000 kilometers, 3,000 kilometers, 5,000 kilometers, but rather for 300 or 400 kilometers, which is very little. The most expensive chains will cost you over $100, but don't think that if you have a $200 worth bike, the chain for such a bike will cost you maybe just 10 bucks. It will be way, way more. And remember that now, 2022, uh, there is a lack of chains on the market. So take care of your chain. But if your chain wears down quicker, it will also wear down the teeth on your chain rings, on the cassette or the freewheel, but also the jockey wheels on your derailleur, which means all these parts will have to be replaced way quicker. And these are expensive. The cassette, ooh, it can cost you way over $400. And the chain rings, if you have one of the newest cranksets, they, they won't be very cheap, but if you have some older models, you may not be able to find the chain rings which will fit your cranks. That means you need to replace the whole thing with the arms. Very costly thing. This is why we're talking about lubing the chain. <laughs> this is why we're talking about lubing the chain right now on the second lesson. Moving to the second experiment, which was the most surprising to me probably since the beginning of my channel. It was all about lubing the chain with the canola oil, super cheap one, and riding 60 miles in the mud. In order to make sure I only have canola oil on my chain and no other lubricants, I do a triple deep clean of the chain. Uh, I also call it a chain shake. I do it three times with the petrol. I really failed to find the English name for the exact petrol I use here. In Polish it's called extraction gasoline or extracted gasoline. It's not the exact same gasoline that I tank my car with. And it's a really good part of this experiment because it might be a really good hack for you guys to clean a very messy chain. I would not do it every month. I would not do it every three months. I would only do it when the chain is really full of grime. And in this case, I just make sure I do an exclusive test of the canola oil. Then I use my degreaser to clean the drivetrain, make sure there's no excess of other lubricants there. We put the chain on the bike and Let's oil it. For putting the canola oil on the chain, I'm using the exact same technique I just showed you in this episode. I see right away that this one is softer. It reminds me a little bit of the Rhodes uh, Morgan Blue lubrication. The drivetrain is clean, the chain is loop, I am ready to go and I really need to go right now because I'm pretty sure I'll be getting back to the studio well after the dusk. I'm on my way and to be honest, 62 miles or 100 kilometers ridden through these muddy, wet trails are a real challenge for the chain on an e-bike and for my loop. Aren't you curious what the results will be? And indeed, I'm getting back to the studio in the darkness, but you know what? I already feel that the chain was silent and the shifting was crisp. And here are the test results of the canola oil, which cost about $2.50 a liter. But wait a minute, first I need to clean the seat post. Ha! It's hard to believe, but this chain is still clean and it didn't get dry. It still has lubrication on it. I am really surprised, guys. After that muddy ride, I really am. A very good lubrication test is also checking out how quickly will I be able to clean now the drivetrain. And it's hard to believe, but the mud gets really easily off the cassette with a simple brush. Same with the crank set. The rack will remove all the mud from the chain very easily. This is amazing, guys. I need to do more testing because this is so cheap and natural. If the canola oil is natural. Now I'm just protecting the whole drivetrain with the canola oil and I'm gonna do another 500 kilometers in the future. 
Oops. Shifting up and down the cassette works beautifully. Multiple shifting beautifully. I will give you more results in a couple of weeks. Mm. And you can drink it. Although it's not really tasty. <clears throat> it's really too early to say that I'm gonna be using this oil right now. But one thing really makes me puzzled. One liter of this oil cost about $2.50. One tenth of that, and this is my own oil, which I find very good for the bicycles, will cost two or three times more. One tenth of it will cost two or three times more than one liter of this one. Do we really need to pay that much for the oil for the chain? I will definitely continue testing this one and, and this is not something that I suggest that you already use on your bikes but if you don't have any lubrication for your bike and you need to go on the training or maybe in muddy or rainy ride it's definitely better to have this than nothing. Moving on to the third experiment because I've prepared a lot of stuff for you guys we're trying to see now whether you can ride your conversion kit e-bike without chain. And this experiment, it's not just for fun. You will see why. Let's go out and try it. It was so much fun and I can tell you that it's impossible to do wheelie really on such a system without the chain. Of course the whole magic is hidden right here with the pedaling sensor. When we pedal the controller knows it and it turns the motor on. But uh, I'm not just showing you to do something interesting in this episode. I'm showing you this so that you know that the motor which is mounted in the rear hub will prolong the lifetime of your whole drivetrain because the power of the motor doesn't add up to the power of your legs that are pushing on the, or pulling on our chain. Most of the bikes, high quality and expensive bikes, will have the central motor right here and then for example when you push the pedals with 200 watts of the power the motor will add let's say 200 watts and you have 400 watts of power, it's a lot working on your chain, which is working on your chain rings. So, number one, the motor in the rear hub is better for the long life or life of your drivetrain. And number two, if you have the e-bike with the centrally located motor, you need to clean and lubricate your chain more often. That's it. And here we have the example with the centrally located motor. This is by far my favorite system. This is Shimano EP8. But just remember that its power will add up to the power of our legs. And so the tension of the chain right here will be much higher than with the motor in the hub. This is why we really need to take care of it. Now we're gonna do some unboxing of a little sweet e-bike which will work on the e-bike rental center and I will show you what do I do with a new chain. Bam! <laughs> Ta -da. And... Woo! <laughs> Most of the new chains are a little bit too sticky. They have too much oil or some kind of lubrication outside. So here wiping it off doesn't really work. This is why I'm going to use the degreaser. Now the chain will be more dirt proof. 
And this is how we end lesson number two of our free bike service course or the school. And because it's a school, we're gonna have three questions at the end. I'm just gonna tell you that next week we're talking about washing and storing bicycles. And now it's time for the questions. Question number one. Not lubing the chain is one of the most expensive things you can neglect on your bike. True or false? One T or one F? Not lubing your chain is one of the most expensive things you can neglect on your bike. Number two, multiple choice. A worn chain will cause other components of your bike to wear quicker. And these are A, the cassette, B, the chain rings of your crankset, and C, a rear hub of the bike. Once again, worn chain will cause other components of the bike to wear quicker. And these are A, the cassette, B, the chain rings, three, a rear hub of your bike. Question number three, simply answer the question. What should we usually do with the new chain on the bike before the first ride? This is it. Thank you for being with me and see you next week.